All right, guys, welcome back to Frugal Homestead. And I thought it was time to do the four month update, a third of a year, with our new Grow Watt Grid Tie Inverter. Now, I know there's a lot of you that are new to the channel, so I'm going to go over what we have as far as panels and what we've been doing, and also talk about the numbers of the electric bill because everybody wants to see the true production. Now, with that said, I do want to say this video is sponsored by Connect 10 Internet, but more on that later. All right, so this is one of our two arrays. We have a total of 10 285-watt GCI panels. Six back there and four right there. Now, basically, they're wired in series, so this is not the most productive way to run your panels, that's for sure. But with 2,850 watts, we have a, a pretty decent-sized little array here to help offset our electrical costs. Now, to be fair, between the wood burner blowing smoke on them and the terrible year we've had, it definitely has not been optimal. So now that you guys have seen the panels, I want to talk about production because we're in a semi overcast day here and we're pulling in about 1600 watts consistently right now. Now I do want to say that it's not always like this. We have had such a terrible year for production, but then you have to look at the months we're talking about here because these are our worst months. Now we are just slightly over four months because I had to wait to get the electric bill. So I give you an honest reading of what's going on. And it should also be noted that our electric rates literally went up the moment I installed this thing. Um, across the board, everybody's power rates have been going up. And the actual time I installed this to get rid of our old grid ties, the rates had gone up like 10 days before. So when I show you guys the electrical numbers, please factor that in. But with that said, we are already at 3.1 kilowatt hours today. Uh, we are overall in the last four months, 753.6 kilowatt hours. Now that is extremely low, most of you would say, but those are also the four worst months of the year that we have, whether it's snow or like this year, just being overcast and rain constantly all winter. All winter has literally just been rain and overcast. It has been absolutely terrible this year. But going forward, I'm seeing production numbers on the day double, if not triple, when we have sunny days. Which means I can easily see this doubling or tripling production over the next four months. Those are going to be our best production months, I think, going forward. But we'll have to see it may be split to where the best four months is two months at the end of next billing and then two months after but right now we're pretty happy with 753 because the savings actually is pretty good considering our rates just went up now i want to say that my split system in series is not optimized you know that is not good Space is a factor, and you've got to work around it. But when you're doing series, you really want to have all your panels pretty much on the same plane and not shaded. But as you can see, it is still producing pretty good. If you've got 2850 as far as wattage of panels up there, and on a sunny slash overcast day, you know, a little bit of cloud cover moving through, if you're pulling 1600 watts, you're doing pretty good. You know, it's, it's not something to complain about at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But let's get to the electric bills because I know everybody wants to see those numbers. So for those of you who don't know, Connect 10 is a wireless internet provider that uses all three of the top major networks in the USA. That means AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon. So you have the ability to have the best service wherever you are. Now in our home, we use it to stream, we use it to upload our YouTube videos and do all the normal things you would do in your home. But Connect 10 doesn't stop there because they have amazing equipment and it's a low power draw. Why that matters? Well, because for one, we're taking our tiny house off grid here. So power does matter in our future buildup. 
which is one of the reasons we chose them. The other is that we travel a lot. We like to go out on the road, and when we're out on the road, a simple power inverter that plugs into your cigarette lighter, very, very low wattage, usually around $20, can be had that you plug the unit into, and as you're going down the road, you've got power. Now, not only that, but we like to go places that there is no power, or that the internet is no good. For example, have you ever used internet in a campground? They're always terrible, especially at night when everybody's trying to use it. Why not bring your own? Can your home internet do that? And with plans starting at a simple $69 a month, how can you go wrong? Think about it. You're saying, oh, I have T-Mobile home internet or I have Verizon home internet for this price. But what happens when there's too many people on that network? Are they gonna let you change to from T-Mobile to Verizon, from Verizon to AT&T? No, that's where Connect 10 comes in line. If you are van life, if you are traveling, if you're a person that wants to have internet no matter where you go, Connect 10 is for you. And with that said, I will put all the information in the description box below so you can go check it out for yourself. Now back to the video. All right, guys, sorry about this being inverted up and down, but this is how it has to work. So last month, we used 520 watt, 521 kilowatt hours for a $118 bill. Now the previous month we used 615 kilowatt hours for a $135 bill. But here's where you can see the real difference of these are all skewed. Because we used 606 and only got charged $98.77 a year ago. So essentially we used almost the same amount and the bill is $35 higher from a year ago. Now you're also seeing that a year ago we used this and this is now. So you can see how much less now that the sun started coming out some that it's cut our electric bill. It's still more than it was back then but we're almost back on track with it just based on the solar producing. Now when we throw it over and go to a longer term look here so you got March with 521 kilowatt hours, February was 615, January was 717 kilowatt hours, December was 660 kilowatt hours. These are our two coldest months is January and December. And November 609. But the problem we have here is the cost goes up exponentially. You know, you got 695 here for 145 and you got 609 for 129. So right in between this September and November block is when the price went up, which is actually right when I was installing this new grid tie. So it skews all the results. But still, please understand that on our property, we have the main house, we have the garage and apartment, and we have the tiny house down there, which it'll be going off grid, so it doesn't use much electricity, but still, all these properties, and we're running right around under a $200 bill at worst, and these are the worst months of the year. Having a 118 bill in March, I don't think anyone would complain about that. Most people I see are having two and three hundred dollar bills. Now we do heat our home about 75% with a wood burning furnace, but it has a blower that runs almost, almost nonstop, honestly. So we also have been kiln drying wood in that outdoor building with our wood burning furnace. So we've been running a little harder than normal. And we're still having a $118 bill. So I think it's undeniable that solar can lower your bill. You just have to accept the fact that you can actually do more on your own just by turning things off, turning down the hot water tank. You know, little things that eat up lots of power like just leaving your TV on when you're not in the room or leaving the coffee maker on after it's completed rather than just pouring the coffee into a coffee pot. Taking showers instead of baths is a big one. Not using your stove like we use our air fryer or our Instapot or our roasting pan to cook with as a stove is extremely inefficient on electric. Just some simple ways you can change things up. 
So I'll be honest guys, at four months, I am happy with this purchase. This thing's flawless. I can literally just walk by it and check on all my stats. I have not been able to get the wireless module to be able to work with the app and all that yet, but I don't really need it. I'm not trying to check this thing like crazy when I'm not at home. My wife can come through and just look at it, check it. I don't need any external devices to be able to like read how much power we're producing. All of it makes it such a hands-free experience. It's silent, which is actually really great when you're trying to do videos. But at the end of the day, the value play on it is, is what I want to talk about. Because my panels have already paid for themselves, even using the old grid ties, because they've been up for so many years. But the reality of this is I spent something like $550 for this, I think. That's with shipping and all. And when you look at the value of that, and if I'm saving on the four worst months of the year, probably 20 to $30 a month off my electric bill, maybe more, because we don't have real high usage right now. Now I will save more in the future because this house will become an Airbnb and we'll be moving to the tiny house. So I'll use more in a day, which will make this more efficient because instead of just giving power back to the company when I'm not using it, that it'll just do more offsetting, I guess, if that makes sense. But I think that I will pay this off within, by the time summer comes and we start air conditioning and stuff, there's a good chance I could pay this off by the end of the year. Um, I guess it depends on the savings amount, how soon I get the Airbnb going. But I'm not gonna say that everybody could pay this exact model off in one year, but I could say that it will produce enough that it's way more cost effective than a lot of other ways people are doing it nowadays. Now, one thing I do want to say about this model and this thing is there is a lot of varied information out there on how these are hooked up because there is 220 models that are made for UK and different ways you hook them up. And then there's the model here for double pole for here in the States. I really would say that if you're going to get this, and especially if you're watching in a co another country like the UK where your basics is 220, talk to the guys at Signature Solar. Talk to them. Get their information because the packaging materials that come with this are not very good. But... With that said, do I think it's a great value? I think, yes, I think compared to them old plug and play grid ties I ran, this thing is stellar. This is amazing. It runs great. It's got a way better waveform pattern. It can take some serious abuse because we've had some nasty storms knock the power out here and this thing just shuts off, countdowns till it restarts when the power comes back on and off she goes again. No issue, no problem. So four months in, and we're winning just as simple as that so if you like this kind of content and if you haven't already and I don't know why you wouldn't have come on guys go down hit subscribe hit the notification bell so you see all of our upcoming videos make sure you leave us a like let us know down in the comments are you looking at grid tie in your system are you going off grid what's your plans in the future share your experience and what you think if you have one of these or if you're running something else and I'll see you in the next one